Of my clock spoil go live. Don't lose your best. We have stuff to discuss. If you really want to hear about fishing, let me blow your mind. Now listen to something. When you're talking about fish, you just hit this spot. I was hoping you did believe it or not. The fish your father caught, to you it was great. But it's them small fish my father does use for bait. Lion went ahead on points in the show. Complete eliminated Mr. Debo. The next man to beat was Billy Outrageous. He asked the judges if he could lie first. The judges asked Lion. The lion agreed. Say the topic will pick is alright with me. He outrageous, I strong, let we meet head on. And, and when we done, done see who had fit to win it from your hair life. That is life. Life. Your hair life. Think of it. You know the drill, share it, spread it, let them know we're here. Tell them, shook it up, who like best win, and do what you like, lad. The operator say that he knew a tailor comes to make him soon. The man is the master. If you show him a man coming wrong a corner, he could make him a suit and don't even measure. Sitting down correct, expertly made and fitting perfect. He used to sew for Shakespeare, make super hamlet. And up to this day, he ain't make a mistake yet. You know the crowd went wild, they couldn't pull down. Listen to King Lion. Listen to King Lion. Judges brought the crowd back to order and asked the lion to lie about a tailor. He said, My man is the best, Rolf is his name. Cutting cloth, making suit is his game. Don't show him the man, my tailor is class. Just show him the corner where the fella pass. And he gon' make a suit. That, that is tailor. Your hair like King Liar. Teach your pussy, say if you tell a lie, you go into hell as soon as you die. Yeah? Let me open it up now. Become a people vex. What's the date today? I share that. The date today is Tuesday, 27 June. And it was exactly 8 o'clock according to Google when I started. So do not be. I was ready to go early. And then people sent me a message saying, like my clock's point. Anyway, we are going to call and interview the gentleman who was outside rituals in a couple minutes. He was outside rituals and he was there protesting. As is his right. And I call him to tell him, fully endorse what you're doing. This is what I stand for. And he's coming tomorrow night in San Fernando. We're giving him a five minutes and he's coming to talk his talk. Because this is what we want. Trinidadians and Tobagonians to stand up. But we have to also have a conversation. Because they have a, we get an apology. And I tell my people, I say it plain. I said let me tell you exactly what I said. Eh? We asked for an apology and got one. Time will tell how much goodwill was lost due to his initial statement and how much damage control this release accomplished. It should not have happened and the apology should not have taken this long, but it's done. 
Others are now informed differently and may have to make their own decisions. But as a man of my word, my personal boycott is now over. Now, certain people don't like that because they want Philip to go on the rampage. Because, but you had him, boy, you had him, you had him, you had him, blood, you blood. Like, be serious. Mario Sabga Abud spoke a crocus bag of ass. He was one of a couple people in that interview who spoke a, cup, a crocus bag of ass. We have, we have pulled down Mario Sabga Abud to the point where he had to apologize. That is how the system is supposed to work. What has not yet done? What has not yet happened? What has not yet sunk into Trinidadians' minds is a much worse statement was made and everybody ignored it. Why? Because you don't know how to touch these people. You don't know how. Mario Sabga told you how to touch him. He said, I have 120 restaurants. They call me the Starbucks of the Caribbean. Jackass. Jackass. He just showed you where to touch him. The rest of them talking. You ain't no Jim from Jack from Joan. You ain't no nobody on that table. And they're talking large. My first question, and a lot of Syrian people wrote me, called me, messaged me, bounced me up in the gym, bounced me up in Westby's to ask me, this is the first question, who the ass tell any of them on that table to speak for 5,000 or how much ever Syrians they have in this country? Who? Mario, where was that memo that said you and Peter George and the rest of y'all could have spoken for how much ever Syrians was in Trinidad and Tobago. Are they paying anybody bills? Besides your little cabal and your little family, are they paying people bills? You see, some of y'all have isolated yourselves. And I just had this conversation with Mikey now, who's going to take Mikey to task today. Now, Mikey is like my brother. We grew up together. But y'all have to know me by now. Friend or foe. We gonna, if we disagree, we're going to disagree. You know how much time people are telling me, boy, you ain't no Gary Griffith, wife running for COP, what you doing? Gary Griffith is my friend. We went to St. Mary's College together. We worked, I worked with him when he was Minister of National Security. Jump high, jump low, no matter what go on, he will still be my friend. But we will disagree publicly when there's time to disagree. And nobody's do that harder and harsher than me. I pull Gary low with this Faris al Rawi bullshit and he know that. And my real friends understand that, that I will not compromise my principles, my ethics things or what I stand for and again Lisa Culey told me today stop cussing because it is not becoming of a future prime minister and I'm saying again I'm going to write it down and tattoo it on my forehead I am not interested in becoming anybody's prime minister I don't even want to go in the parliament this will shock some of you I don't want a job a bill a shortcut I don't want nothing from this we are doing this to wake Tran and Tobago up and to solve problems through people empowerment like Getting Mario Sabga about to understand. You do not talk that amount of bullshit and get away in a real nation. But how much of us here really paying attention to the real issues? When Peter George said that the biggest concern of the Habs is the shrinking middle class, who, by his estimation, serves one purpose. To insulate the haves from the have-nots. See where we're going? Or they even pay attention to that. But that was the most serious statement made. Because Peter George said out loud what we all know for a fact. Trinidad is not a racist society. It's a society divided stre strenuously by class. And it is that class divide that has forced non-functional, dysfunctional, malfunctional governments to make stupid, idiotic policy plans and programs to keep the people pressed into perpetual servitude. And that is the truth. Because your ministers of education, past, past, past and present, have all been assholes, bar none. Because none of them have challenged the system to ensure that every child finds the right stream to swim in. So we're trying to force everybody in Trinidad and Tobago to be a doctor or a lawyer or your boss. So we're grinding out doctors and lawyers and fast food cashiers and security guards. That's what our education system is doing. And this is our reality. That we keep voting governments into power 
that do not give a fire truck about you and your loved ones if you don't fit into whatever is their cabal, gang, finances, family, and whatever. So when Peter George said what Peter George said, and people ask me, Peter George is a madman because he's now put it on the table. And what struck me, and I kept quiet, is that nobody talking about that. It's easy to boycott Mario. Mario is a jackass. Mario is a total and complete, and in this case, almost unforgivable jackass. But you know what? And this is the truth. Vex if you want. All of we talk shit 300 times in real life. Mario was sitting down in a comfortable environment where he and all of the Marie Antoinettes in his life, who are accustomed to talking that level of bullshit, forgot that the camera was there. And they was puffing up and dick measuring for Anthony Boudin. So that's why you hear all that jackass talk come out. So Mario Sabgabu, who knows? He has to know. He has to know because, because he has relatives who are in the fast food business who had to be ringing up his ears today because all the workers vex and the customers vex. So this is how all you see we. So you put yourself in a position where the people who are responsible for the financial success of your business were at odds with you, which is a stupid, stupid thing to do. But talking to Mikey now, who's who Mikey and I had to cross swords today. Now, Mikey is a very intelligent guy. And I had to tell Mikey, I said, Mikey, you can't be defending this level of bullshit. Because I know plenty Syrian people. The very rich avoid me, especially if they've made their money through illegal, immoral, or unethical ways. Because they know at some point, at some point, they're going to run afoul of me. At some point, I will get my information. And no amount of friend going and save you. I'll stick a pin in that. Mikey and I was talking about how the entire Syrian community is painted with this drug trafficking, money laundering brush unfairly and as a fact. Because I tell people already, my best friend in the world is Paul Sabga. And he's a catcher, Syrian. He's worked six days a week, 24 hours a day. Anybody who know him will tell you that. Anybody who know. And he ain't have a pot to piss in a place to put the pot if he had it. He's drive an old B14 century that falling apart. I used to pick up and drop, and I don't mean to disrespect Paul. I tell you, he's my best friend in the world. I used to pick up and be dropping Talat Lakis. Talat is one of those first Arabs. He used to go and sell Talat. My father's store and Talat's store was next to each other in St. James. When I was a little boy in primary school, I used to go and sit down and listen to the, to the conversations and hear him tell his stories about how they used to go in the, in the country and sell cloth. Patik, Patik. I didn't know what it mean. And, and, and everybody buying cloth and paying them three cents, five cents when they get their pay. And all of that, Talat, I used to pick him up in the maxi taxi stand just before he dead, God rest his soul. Nothing left in the world. Not every Syrian in Trinidad Tobago is rich. Not every Syrian in Trinidad is part of that cabal. Not every Syrian in Trinidad is part of whoever Mario Sabga and Peter George thought they were speaking for. And today, I had to do a quick assessment before Mario's apology. Because unlike many of you all, when I say I boycotted something, it boycott for God. So I was happy to pull on my boycott. Not that I shop at anything that Mario Sabo about sells, because I don't frequent his stores. There's nothing that he sells that I like. I don't like his donuts. I don't like his burgers. I don't like his pizza. I don't like how his coffee tastes. But I think all of those things, they have a market for it, clearly, because he says you have 120 stores. So somebody else besides me buying it. But when I do my assessment, because Bachelor... I eat three meals a day outside. Today I was eating my lunch in Leale Cafe, a nice Arabic Middle Eastern behind Scotiabank in Starlight. And I tell you, I eat most of my meals outside. And I try to do an assessment, a quick assessment. If I boycott every Syrian-owned establishment in Trinidad Tobago, I had to go down to Shagwanas and find stand that's selling fried chicken and hops and chow and bread. Because check what's going on. And ask yourself, ask yourself, What's going on there? How is it that this community is thriving so? Thriving. How is it? And, again, even though Adam Abut, brother-in-law, I think, suing me, so I wouldn't go back to Adams until that is resolved. Adams, when you go to Adams, the service is excellent. When you go to Panini, the service is excellent. The staff appear happy. So I don't know how to tell you 
to challenge them. But for y'all who want to, because it seems some of y'all don't want the boycott to done. It seems like for some of y'all, getting Marius Abdul Abud to apologize for what he said is not enough because you have an Arab in reach. But I want to tell you something. Not every Syrian fits that bill. But more importantly, and this is important, the questions we need to be having is, why? Why the country is the way it is? And I wrote this, but I didn't share it. All they want to fight, fight. Boycott the man, shut him down, and then what? What is the victory there? I said I accepted the, the apology because the truth is, there is nothing much left to fight for here. The point has been made and we have much, much bigger mountains to climb. If you all want to spend some time going round and round this mountain, go too hard. But brace for the next thing that hits you, it might be the loss of your free speech. But stick a pin in that very important issue. Why you don't fight the education system that's only producing fast food workers? Why don't you fight the laziness in our culture that has us as the largest per capita consumer of Kentucky Fried Chicken in the world, KFC, for decades? Why we have such a booming and growing fast food culture while boasting the highest rates of heart disease and preventable death from disease in the Western Hemisphere? Beat up on Mario all you want. He deserve it. But then what? Then what? That is my question to you. Because we're looking for a common enemy. We're looking for something finally to sink our teeth into. But I want to tell you something. Mario Sabgabud is not it. He's a preview. He's a snack. He's the bread you get when you sit down in the restaurant before the, the, the before scores come. He's nothing. Don't ever shop by him again. Don't have the courage of your convictions. Say, all right, me, Mar me Mario, me and you, we're done. Don't ever go there again. But stop wasting time pretending that somehow that is the problem. Because if Mario Sabgabud is the problem, we have no problem. But I'll tell you what's the problem. Plenty more people have to apologize. Plenty, plenty more people have to apologize. But before we get into that, I wanted to tell you the reality of our situation. And I want to call this guy Ian Smart. I want to see if he still want to do this interview. Our truth, we cannot escape from our truth. And beating up and beat him. Beat him. We fire one mayor and ignore next mayor who took more crap because it was a longer walk. We need to check ourselves. We really need to check ourselves because we need to know what we're about. Hello, good evening. Mr. Smart, this is Philip Alexander. Yes. How are you? You are live with me now. You still want to go forward with your interview? Yes, sir. Right. This is Ian Smart. He was the gentleman who was outside rituals on Maraval Road today. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, how did it feel? Was this your first um, one-man protest? Yes, correct. And give us, tell us what motivated you, how it felt, and what you think of the apology. Well, I mean, what they said was just completely outrageous. I mean, it just goes to say that they live in this um, ivory tower and they're totally disconnected from reality. But I'm to even think to say that. I mean, rebellions have been started around the world a set of much less. Right? So it was just completely ridiculous. And I don't know, and I was following the, you know, the social media um, hype that I came across from this movie. And I, and, I, and, I, and I started going nowhere other than staying in, in social media. So I said, you know what? I look in to jump out the social media thing and do the real thing and go down about that. Right? And so that's what I did. Excellent. How did it feel? As somebody who has done a few one-man protests myself, how did it feel for you? Well, at first it was like people like ships and British man company for what are you, they, 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 some of the questions people ask me were like, what do you do you? Hey, I don't know what do me, it's what they do us. What they do we, you know? Well said. So, you know, it's, uh, and, then and then some people were like, they were totally oblivious to this show and the body in my parts unknown and what um, transpired on it. So I was glad he educated them on it. Um, the police came and, you know, told me to move some of my banners that were blocking the window and move my chair and tell me not to talk so loud and no more Babylon stripping this now. <laughs> now, 
I know that you are a highly educated man. You come from what would be considered a good family. So what would, and, and Trinidadians will always be shocked at the type of person. And I guess it, it has to do with the level of information that you're working with. What inspires you to take action like this? Um, well, I've been in the renewable energy business now for about seven, eight years, right? Since I launched my company, I'm Smart Energy Limited. And I have been trodden to try and make this renewable energy revolution happen. You know, people might know me as the guy that brought in the first Tesla into the Caribbean. The first what? The Tesla, the, um, the electric vehicles. Right, okay, good. I brought it out into Trinidad, the first, elect the first electric car to Trinidad. And um, that sparked a lot of interest and... Um, and I've worked, tried to work with the man in government, the People's Partnership, now you're all here, and it's not making any real traction. If you look around, there's no renewable energy anywhere. If you go to Barbados, it's the exact opposite. I just came out from a trip from Guyana. They are looking to take their oil revenue that they're going to start generating in a couple of years to transform their economy into a green economy. Well, right? I mean, you know, you should know that I am a strong propo proponent of renewable and alternative energy. And when the last government was in power, I had a lengthy conversation with the Minister of Energy asking him, when are they going to remove the legislative blocks that prevents people from making their own homes and businesses solar powered or renewable energy powered? And he ducked that conversation. Where are we with that now? Has anything changed? Well, you got old heads at the attack that um, still sticking, you know? They, they're frightened of um, renewable energy. Um, I know they have people, good people in the ministry are planning, like Dr. Kiran Niles, that are trying to make a lot of work to, to make this thing happen. Like, I've had meetings with him, and he's brought in, he has brought a consortium of different people across the board who've been working on renewable energy to, to talk about it at a big table meeting. So I know Mr. Niles is working on it very diligently. I'm, sub I'm actually submitting a paper from Smart Energy to the Ministry of Planning on how to finance renewable energy projects and electric cars because they don't already really banking institutions are still not aware of these kind of projects and how to deal with them. So we're um, supplying a paper to help the government for the next budget to, um, to deal with this and well, to try to kick off the renewable energy. Our, our public meetings have an open mic and I told people that you might be joining us tomorrow evening in San Fernando. Can I confirm that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so that I know that people looking at this now will be coming up there. They're going to have questions to ask you about this. So I look forward to it. Is there anything else you'd like to add before you close? Well, I am getting support. We do know, me and my um, new political party, which is registered, um, uh, has gained official support from the Green Party in the UK. As well as I'm getting support from organizations in the US that are uh, you know, like, you know, um, Occupy Wall Street, these type of organizations that are against the 1%. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that, uh, that are international topics, hot topics all over the world right now. This is the problem we have in China, that we're not alone. Other countries have this. United States have this in a big way. Well, the, what makes us alone is the lack of systems that respects you and this revolution and any type of people power and anything that deviates from the established order or challenges the system. We have, we have a country where it is difficult to change things. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I look forward to meeting you in person and seeing you tomorrow in San Fernando with there at 6 o'clock. Thanks a lot for taking my call. No problem, sir. Take care, bye. Bye. Now, that was a... The reason for that call, more than anything else, was because he did his one-man protest. And I absolutely applaud him because that's where we need people to go. It is not enough to sit and bitch and moan on social media. And tomorrow night in, in San Fernando, if the 100,000 people who watch the videos every week or two weeks come out, we have 100,000 people. We have 50,000 people. If we have 50,000 people or 20,000 people in San Fernando tomorrow, today, a gentleman who documents all of our protests, all of our events on camera, um, he's, he pointed out on he never misses the opportunity to go on CNC3 and TV6 and say on their pages and say, how could you give these issues so much mileage and then try to block and ignore the entire massive protest that we did against the cybercrime bill in front of the parliament? 
And why you're not covering covering our public meetings? Why is the system trying to make it that like we don't even exist? And you see, you need to come out. You need to come out in your tens of thousands. Because to sit down here and say that this apology is not enough. You know what I'm telling you? You know what I want to say? This apology is enough. Why? Because if this was all we had to fight, we could have fight this for the next six months. Fight it for the next year. But we have much bigger issues to deal with and plenty more people have to apologize. So let me deal with that. What do you say? What do you say? Let me make a list of all the people who need to apologize. We need, where you want to start from? Politically, business-wise, banks. Where you want to start? Who is responsible for the state of the state? Who is responsible for this being do what you like land? Where do you want to start and what do you want to sink your teeth into? While we're having this conversation today, while all of this is going on, and you have to learn to whistle and walk when you want to be an activist who stand up for the country, while we're dealing with all of this and all that destruction going on, the PNM government, led by its Attorney General, Faris al Rawi, is trying to pass a law, believe it or not, believe this or not, Faris al Rawi is trying to pass a law that is written into the law. The Cybercrime Bill actually says, Clause 3 provides that the act shall have effect even though inconsistent with Sections 4 and 5 of the Constitution. Now stop me and hit me with a 2 by 4 how could you write a law inconsistent with the supreme law? Hit me with a two by four because I had to be in Alice's Wonderland. How could the attorney general, the defender of the supreme law, be writing a law that contradicts, conflicts, misdirects, deflects, abuses, rapes, sets on fire? The Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and And why the fire truck by people are not waking up in alarm? But we want to go and boss Mario business. Shut him down. No more donut must sell. And rightly so. But while you're focused on bullshit, your minister, your attorney general, and I want to tell you what it says. Because it says, clause 3 provides that the act shall have effect even though in consistent with sections 4 and 5. So you might say, oh gosh, the constitution has so many sections. Where's the point? We lose 2, 4 and 5. Where's 4 and 5? 4 is recognition and declaration of rights and freedoms. And 5, just in case he doesn't rape for enough, 5 is the protection of rights and freedoms. Let that sink in. So if this law pass, they set a precedent. You know what? I'm getting tired of having to read and spell. Because I'm going to go back on the wall after and we're still beating up Mario. When this is going on, and this is when we went outside the parliament to protest. And this is why 50,000 people should be in San Fernando tomorrow. Because I'm not hearing nobody else talking about this. And this is a real situation to address. Because if this law goes into effect, if they pass this law as written, regardless of what else is done to the law, they would have set a precedent that you can assault the Constitution. And the moment that you can assault the Constitution and eviscerate it and rip out the most important clauses, the most important sections that guarantees and protects the rights and freedoms of the people of Trinidad Tobago, you could do them what the hell you want. You could do them what you want. You could say, you know what? That election in 2015, that was the last one. And not a dog bark. You know why? Because I follow in this law. And I follow the Media Association of Trinidad Tobago. And you know the Media Association of Trinidad Tobago is writing to the government and, and pressing. You know the Media Association is pressing that journalists be exempt. That's all they care about. That's all they care about. That journalists be exempt from from the draconian and onerous provisions in this bill, like clause eight, clause eight that seeks to create the offense of illegally acquiring computer data. What does that mean, Faris? 
What does illegally acquiring computer data mean? If somebody sends me an email and I don't know them, was either action illegal? Why is this written so vague? What are you trying to do? Jail everybody who have a data connection? Clause 8 seeks to create the offense of illegally acquiring computer data. This, if you have a smartphone, you're in trouble. If you have an email account, you're in trouble. If you have a Facebook account, you're in trouble. Far is coming to shut you up. This cybercrime bill is madness. Clause 8 seeks to create the offense of illegally acquiring computer data. This offense would carry a fine of $100,000 and two years imprisonment on summary conviction or a fine of $500,000 and three years imprisonment on conviction on indictment. This clause also seeks to create the offense of receiving or gaining access to computer data knowing that it is obtained illegally and would carry the same penalty as that of the offense of illegal, illegally acquiring any computer data but how do they prove that you know how this is written deliberately vague or onerous and draconian and it is this video tonight that should have 5,000 people watching you should wake everybody up if ever we need to shut this country down stop working Mario kiss my ass with Mario this is our reality because the, the social media that allowed you to pull Mario low the social media because Guardian and Express ignore the story and they gave you no platform, TV6 and CNC3 gave you no platform to express your outrage. It is social media that pulled Mario Sabga Budlo. It is social media that forced Mario Sabga Budlo to apologize. And it is social media that Faris al Rawi is trying to shut down here. And this is the reality that we're facing. Listen to how this thing is written. It's like standard three children wrote this law. Clause 9 seeks to create the offense of illegally interfering with a computer system or with a person who is using or operating a computer system. If you walk through a cyber cafe and flick a man air, you could, you could make a jail because you're illegally interfered with a man who's using a computer. This is the bullshit that the man wrote as law that could pass. And you can't rely on the opposition because they walked out. They walked out in a huff to prove a point that the only thing they could do is walk out. Kamala miss me with the bullshit because while you were outside, while you were outside, the government passed a law that made it a criminal offense to ignore and to interfere or get in the way of a, a traffic warden and it's $10,000. And if you refuse to let a police officer take your blood on suspicion of alcohol, they could cancel your license for a year. It's madness going on in this country. And we need to get into power quickly and fire this government and repeal every law that Faris al Rawi has written. This draconian, onerous madman, Faris al Rawi, is burning a trail through your rights through your human rights. This is what is at risk here. Clause 9 seeks to create the offense of illegally interfering with a computer system or with a person who is using or operating a computer system. What madness is this? This offense would carry a fine of $100,000 and two years imprisonment on summary conviction or a fine of $300,000 and three years imprisonment on conviction. If you touch a computer, this man want this man mad. Mad, mad, mad. Clause 11 seeks to create the offense of illegally producing, selling, procuring, importing, exporting, distributing, or otherwise making available a computer device or program for the purpose of committing an offense under the act. But the act is silent on what our offense is. So who makes the decision? Who makes the decisions? Who decides what was illegal under this act? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. So anybody could say. Think about what is happening while you are silent, while you are going about your business. Think about what is at stake. This offense would carry a fine of $200,000 and three years imprisonment, or a fine of $500,000 and five years imprisonment on conviction and indictment. Clause 12 seeks to create the offense 
of the unauthorized grant of access to computer data that is commercially sensitive or a trade secret which relates to the national security of the state or which is stored on a computer system and is protected against unauthorized access. Now, that sounds like something that you might want. But what if somebody gets this and emails it to you? You know how many times I get WhatsApps and emails I just delete one time? I don't even want to know if it is legal for me to have that information. I just delete it one time. The kind of crap they send by me. But the point that I am trying to make, because I'm going to stop here now, and I'm going to go through the cybercrime bill with you tomorrow in San Fernando. But the point I want to make to you is while that is going on, there is nobody talking. Corn beef mouth and fixing TNT and all the others who normally would make a noise, they're working for the PNM now, they're getting handled, so they have nothing to say. So you're thinking that if nobody talking, maybe nothing wrong. But you're wrong. This government has bought and paid for everybody who is no, who you are accustomed to hearing from. Some just holding their corner, biding their time, shutting their mouth, hoping for a walk. You see, Trinidadians sell Trinidadians for cheap all the time. Trinidadians do Trinidadians this. And we vex no mother ass with Mario. But Mario is the smallest and the least of the problems. Mario let you see that rich people think they're more powerful than you. Mario let you see that. And he's a, he's, a, he's a jackass for the way he said it. And I said you have to apologize. Apologize to the Syrian community. Apologize to your workers. Apologize to your customers. He did it. He did it. But don't pretend that the owners of Subway and KFC and Burger King and McDonald's and all them other places don't talk the same way. Don't pretend this is a nation of people that do not understand their rights. This is why I gave the, I, I applauded this man for standing up outside rituals today. Because you're all supposed to be protesting outside every business in this country. We're supposed to have protests outside the parliament every single time parliament convened because of the bullshit going on in parliament. But we're not doing that. So they're doing what they want and it become do what you like land. How sad are we? But who else needs to apologize? We need to deal with that. We need to deal with who else needs to apologize. Because the entire administration of justice in this country is failing. 400 years is the estimated requirement. Is the required amount of time estimated 400 years to deal with the backlog. Who had to apologize for that? Who? Who is going to apologize for the systemic failure that has allowed us to jail people in this country because they're poor, because they can't make bail or afford the serial lawyer fees after each adjournment, they had to languish in jail for years longer than they would have been sentenced if, as they were arrested, they pled guilty. Who's to apologize for that? That going on since Williams, Robins, Chambers, Robinson, Manning, Pandey, Kamala, Rowley, all of them. All of them know. But you see, if it was Mario Sabga about child, couldn't happen. If it was Peter George child, couldn't happen. If it was Faris child, couldn't happen. Couldn't happen. Why? Because they have laws for some and laws for others. In do what you like land. And, and they could vex. I watch the UNC sycophants. They vex. They want to eviscerate my name. Go ahead. Go ahead. But it doesn't change the fact that Kamala put on she CPAP dress and CPAP jacket and she boots and went down to fake protests when she knew that on her watch the floodgates were not maintained. So they collapsed. And that's why it flood. So we're going down there and we're giving people the relief because the people are innocent victims. But Kamala need to miss me with this bullshit. Kamala need to apologize. Like how she came and apologized for not repealing the, the um, property tax. 
Why don't apologize for not making recall law as you promised? Why don't apologize for not making procurement red legislation law as you promised? Why don't apologize for not making fixed election date law as you promised? Why don't apologize for not doing campaign finance reform as you as you promised? Kamala, miss with your bullshit girl. I have no time for that. Why don't apologize for the 20,000 house that you could have built with the money that you spend building Coover Hospital that we didn't want, we don't need, and we can't use? Why don't apologize for that, Kamala? Why somebody don't want wake manning up and make him apologize for the 20,000 house that he wastes building Taruba or Scarborough Hospital or Napa Sapa Tapa? That's 60,000 house. Add to Kamala 20, that's 80. Round it off to 100,000 with Bastio and the Piaco cow shed. All of them have to apologize. That's where we need to go. That's where we need to go. We need to have all of these mocking pretenders apologizing. That's where we need to go. Because you cannot be having conversations about, well, Raul is a waste of time. So we will vote him out. Somebody tell me today, a former politician, he said your choices is a muck and a crook. A muck and a crook. You know why the PNM not prosecuting anybody from the UNC? Because this PNM government don't know how to do anything but thief. That's all they know how to do. Thief. And they have a they have a dictator in waiting. Faris Al Rawi. Because all Faris want is to take away your home, human rights and control the parliament. That's what you want. These fellas dangerous. They're dangerous. And you have a responsibility as a citizen to stand up and stop taking bullshit and stop running on with distraction because we can run wrong circles around Mario. I was going to tell Mario tonight, the Bible say, words without deeds are void. You want to apologize, Mario? Do a grand gesture. You say you're powerful. You're wealthy beyond comparison. Free food for a week. Open the store. Tell Trinidadians I apologize from the bottom of my heart. And to demonstrate the sincerity of my apologies, free food for a week at all of our branches. Free food. Because it's easy, Mario, to pelt out a 5,000 and higher up. I was going to deconstruct. If I, if I really wanted to tear Mario Sabga Buddha apart, I would. Because I would deconstruct. You see, this is what I do for a living. So when you're going to write a release, the first thing you do is you write down the script and then you flowerize it. But I see the script when I read it. So I know what he was saying, what he was trying to say. Oops, I talk shit. I didn't expect you all to get upset. I didn't expect you upset to go so far. This spinning out of control, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. Okay, fine. But you know what, Mario? And I tell him, you are somebody who don't buy nothing from you. Do a grand gesture. Because the rest of the country should really boycott your ass. Can you talk shit? And now you apologize, it proved to them that they were right to be angry with you. Because it's either you're apologizing to say that you were wrong, that you deliberately said bullshit, and then they should boycott you for that. Unless you do something. Set up a fund. Do a gesture. Go somewhere where your, your customers are or your, your workers. Create a scholarship. The top 20 performers in your business every year, send them to university. Do something. Do something. Words and you're powerful. But miss me with that because we have to come back. In 2015, when I was running as an independent candidate in Diego Martin West, the people from Rich Plain came to me and said, we have no water. So I did what I thought was the only thing that we could do, and we, the team, called Wasa, and Wasa said, yeah, we can help you with that. We went up there, we did a survey, Hooker, who they just murdered, Hooker came up there, and we identified a place where a water tank could go, and in two twos, the people had water, and they couldn't believe that after a phone call, one week later, they had water, and the system was so simple to work. And I tried to understand why they didn't have water before. Lo and behold, keep Christopher Jackass Rowley, Call the Integrity Commission to report Wassa that they are aiding and abetting my campaign by responding, hear the bullshit, by responding to the people of Rich Play. So it is more important to Keith Rowley that the politics of the day continues and you have no water for 65 years. Take jam. And all your voting that, 
Or you still having that conversation? Or you, or you still, and that's why I'm telling you, I glad I'm not interested in nothing. Or let her beg me to take that job. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Because I tell you already, if I take that job, plenty man going on ball. Plenty people that you thought was paragons of virtue. We're going to expose them, flail them, whip them in public and jail them. And we're going to take back everything. We're going to defrock the wife and take unhang the earrings on the daughter's ears. Everything that state money pay for, we're coming back to take and we want interest too. I want the National Insurance Board to apologize for taking state the people deduction the health deduction you take the people health deduction and spend it on a discotheque i want the national insurance board to apologize for that i want that i want the ass that came on my wall yesterday and read an overview that see me saying all the things that we could have he said there's not enough of a plan and the clown doesn't understand the difference between a leaflet and a book apologize for that it's an overview if you want us to spend conversations on how to build a bridge from Trinidad to Venezuela, we could. And a bridge from Trinidad to Tobago could be built. Could be built. The technology exists. And I'm just distracted by that. But people need to be apologizing in public life in this country. Somebody needs to apologize for the amount of money that has been spent prosecuting Ish and Steve and the rest of the Piaco bandwagon because it's 15 years that going on and somebody should account for that how much state money being spent there the mayor of port of spain throw away a man art and never apologize to the people because when he apologized to the man he had to take state money and pay the man he didn't take joel martinez money he took people's money, your child money, your grandmother money. He took that and paid the man for the art. He gave the man so much money to shut him up. That man giggling still. But it's your money he took. And he should be made to apologize for that. And you need to understand that if you get one apology, take it and move. Let us look for where we need apologies. We need the attorney general to apologize for trying to rape this nation with that cybercrime bill and leave that work. He had to apologize for that. We need Rohan Sinanan to apologize to the people of Tobago for making life hell for the people of Tobago since he has come into office. And the clusterfuck of what he did over the ferry and the, and the cargo boat, he needs to apologize and be fired. Keith Rowley needs to apologize to the nation for email gate for trying to overthrow the government through parliamentary privilege with a lie that to this day has not been subject to any evidentiary proof. Keep me to apologize for that. Need to apologize and then fire himself. The commissioner of police need to apologize to everybody who are waiting decades now having passed through the entire system of how to get a firearm user's license and they've been approved at every level and every step till it reached his desk and then it dead. Commissioner of Police need to apologize for that. That, Stephen Williams, you could fire yourself for because your entire department is being tainted with a corruption brush. People in Trinidad are telling one another that you could pay for your firearm user's license. I don't know. That's what they're saying. The system seems to be a brick wall. So how does anybody get approved? You need, sir, to apologize and fire yourself. Fire yourself for that. This is where we need to go for apologies. We need to deal, we need to document all of these things. We need to document it. We need somebody to apologize for the education system that has our children coming out of school, gang members, functionally illiterate. We have marauding gangs of young females beating the crap out of each other live on social media. And we have a jackass for a minister of education who has no interest in dealing with the issue, just branding them like his leader who called them a pack of hyenas from an African jungle. They should apologize for that. Fuad Khan should apologize for the ambulance service. Terence Dial Singh should apologize for continuing the ambulance service. Whoever was the jackass before the two of them that privatized the ambulance service and leave us in this shit need to apologize. 
need to apologize. Kamala need to apologize for taking Chancery Complex, which Manning need to apologize for stealing the billion dollars that could have built 20,000 house. But Kamala need to apologize for taking it and calling it a teaching hospital because I don't know who they're teaching. That was just bullshit and posture and fool. Fool the people. Fool the people. Who are you teaching in the teaching hospital? Hmm? The Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, Mr. Bermudez needs to apologize to the nation for inflicting his squatting bread sales devoid of licenses devoid of rent they have no permission no authority apologize for that apologize to every legitimate bakery owner in this country who your people are outside illegally selling bread and, and, and cake in front people place who paying rent and paying staff and you there Making money, apologize for that, fire yourself. Fire yourself. Have a lot of y'all need to apologize and then get fired. On all sides. The country rotten to the core. We need a government to go in there and reinvent the whole thing. Mash up what day you had to mash it up. Our entire system is broken. Nothing is making sense. We in a mess. We in a rotted mess. So we get an apology for Mario. Don't let that be the end. Let that be the start. And don't let it only be that we only want an apology from Mario Sabgaboot because we're too Indian to call out Kamala or we're too black to call out Rowley. Miss me with that bullshit. It is time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Whatever is left of the Congress of the people need to apologize to all of its supporters for lying and fooling them. For taking the people's votes to leverage it to get jobs for the boys and contracts for their partners and make a mockery of the third force movement and the third party movement. The Congress and the people need to apologize for that. These are where we need to go. Start from the bottom up. The church needs to apologize. The church needs to apologize. We have a lot of things to deal with. Yeah? Yeah? Tell me. apologize the most all are we all are we that found a justifiable reason to put those criminal parties into power over and over again the people of Trinidad and Tobago need to apologize to each other for that we need to apologize for that and we need to not make that mistake again there is nothing in the people's national movement or the United National Congress of value for anybody in this country. And if you could find something to justify everything that has been spent in the duration and history of this country, you show me. Show me where we got value for money at any point. Thank you. 
Y'all call me apologize for the economy. If it is the passing laws, that them alone can flop. Y'all call me apologize. And then tell the entire UNC bandwagon to apologize for all the money they thief. And tell this government to apologize for the money they thief in now. Tell the PNM apologize for the government campus in town that nobody knows how to use yet. Billions wasted. The waterfront, billions wasted. $700,000 a room to build the Hyatt. Apologize for that because that could have built houses for your supporters who live in desperation and squalor. in our country together again is to build yourself a new dispensation a party of the people for the people run by the people come and be a part of a change that you could really use change that could really work come and adopt take over join be a part of the progressive empowerment party we are meeting in san fernando tomorrow at six o'clock 58 independence avenue in the shadow of the billion dollar chancery lane complex in the shadow of the 6.25 billion dollar per year wasted san fernando section of the failing healthcare. come and join us tomorrow in your thousands bring out your family bring out your friends bring out your neighbors because i want to tell you something if you do not stand up for this country learn to swim when it sink learn to swim and if they could fool you into believing that mario sabda and his bullshit is the important issue Get registered. Start standing up for your country. I'm telling you, I need to see thousands. I need to see thousands of people in South to know that what I'm doing here every night is not a waste of time. I need to know that I'm not wasting time. I could be using this time to go down shakers. They're closing down just now. I like to drink my beers there. I could use this time to go on line and area. Area still open with the, with, with the pointy show, pointy shoe boys. Listen, we need to see that what we're doing resonating with you. We are doing this for and because of love of country. Come and be a part of that. If you hear with me every night, and we go into this every night, let us go beyond the talk. People must come first. Citizens by right. None of you are worse. Yellow, black, or white. Food, shelter, and clothes. Free movement and speech. A garden that grows. And one love for each. If it is that injustice is what they always show. Offices, we ain't there yet, but we will get there when you come on board and you help build it. 
Come and do this tomorrow, 6 o'clock, San Fernando. To all of you who are with me tonight, thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow live in San Fernando. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.